What is up, everybody? Solomon here. Happy Wednesday. If you see any scam ads on this video, please do not participate in those. First off, I wanted to talk. There's been gigantic news today that potentially ties Goldman Sachs into XRP utilization. We will go over that in a second. I'm not saying that's definitive. I'm just going to present everything that I've found, and you can make your own decision about it. I did want to talk a little bit briefly, though, first and foremost, about market sentiment. And I'm just a bit tired. You know, we've all been in this bear market for a while now. I'm, I'm very tired about people <laughs> vocalizing their anger uh, about the prices of digital assets right now. I understand it's frustrating, but in my opinion, this is not a situation to get angry about, uh, and it's completely an opportunity. Yeah, I look at us as pioneers. I look at us as pioneers at the forefront of the fast approaching future of finance. People getting angry tells me one of two things. One, either you've overinvested and you are bitter, uh, or two, you have not done your homework as to what you are actually invested in. I want to ask, do you think that the financial institutions, all of the financial institutions that are building on blockchain, building on digital assets, and preparing for the inevitable, uh, inevitable digitization of everything, do you think they care about prices uh, of, of digital assets in an unregulated market um, as far as them going through to the moon? Or do you think that they uh, are accumulating as much as possible right now because they're building on the tech and they know what's coming? They, they care very much so about not being made obsolete. And the writing is completely on the wall as to where this goes. This whole thing is about utility and interoperability, the removal of friction and liquidity. And unfortunately, ultimately, I believe that this whole thing ends up being about control. So if you want moon conspiracy-based daily content, maybe this channel, this YouTube channel is not for you because I just don't have the intention of providing you that content. I personally am here to continuously learn on a daily basis. I'm here to hopefully make some smart investment decisions for myself and my family on this journey that we are all on, and maybe during the process, help to inspire a few others to do the same. Uh, you know, as always, this information is not financial advice. Let's get into the news today because it's giant. All right, ESL. This is the official Twitter account of ESL, the world's largest esports organization. Apparently, they host esports tournaments all over the globe, 875,600 followers. And today they announced that they partnered with Coil. Obviously, we know Coil is micropayments for content creation. Uh, these micropayments are made in XRP, which is interesting for adoption. And let's read the press, press release right here because I think that this is probably pretty big. And I saw on Twitter it only got like 120 likes, but uh, they obviously have a huge footprint on Twitter. Uh, excited to announce new partnership with Coil. Coil is a single membership that is interoperable across properties and platforms. Creators on the network get paid directly and instantaneously from member users. Uh, we believe this collaboration will enhance the viewing experience for your viewers, fans, and gamers, and players all over the world. Coil offers viewers and fans an efficient way to access and support players across a range of channels such as Twitch, blogs, podcasts, and even our own CSGO hub. Many players today are also content creators themselves who can now use Coil to generate revenue from Coil members across these platforms. And a little bit about this ESL, uh, 242 million fans globally, uh, 1,500 content hours per year, and 8.4 million playing members. So uh, I think this is pretty big. Uh, we'll go from there. All right, now I want to get into um, Goldman Sachs here. And today this news came out, uh, Volante Technologies collaborates with Goldman Sachs to launch digital transaction banking in the cloud. Now, this does tie in directly with XRP. Uh, I'm curious. It's obviously an option whether they want to utilize XRP or not. But we'll read the press release here. Uh, this is uh, Volante uh, to provide the payments technology underpinning, collaborating with Goldman Sachs to provide the payments technology underpinning the bank's recently launched digital transaction banking service built entirely from scratch in the cloud and industry first. Now, Volante has also become a client on the platform. This uh, Goldman Sachs transaction banking platform is designed to be nimble, secure, and easy for the bank's corporate clients to use and for partners to connect to. The platform is fully API enabled and incorporates rich analytics, liquidity management, virtual accounts, and payments. At the core of this Goldman Sachs platform is Volante's cloud native Volpe, providing unified end-to-end -end processing of domestic and international payments, including FX, 
uh, across US, wires, ACH, SWIFT cross-border payments, and other payment rails. So Volpay is at the core of this Goldman Sachs transaction banking platform. Interestingly enough, Volpay comes integrated with a Ripple processor module, which speeds integration to the Ripple Global Settlement Network. Uh, you can find this press release. Many of you are already aware of this, but I'm just tying this all together. Volante's Volpay Ripple processor module simplifies the connection to Ripple's near-time payment and settlement network. And Matt, with it, which is uh, Matthew uh, L-I-N-Y on Twitter, uh, there was an announcement about Volante integrating with First American Trust back in June. Uh, Matt, very much so, bravo to him, reached out and asked Volante directly if XRP was a possible settlement mechanism for the platform. Volante's platform can be used to settle through XRP via our Ripple connection. Now, this is very much so this same announcement here. Volante Tech launches Accelerator for Bank Integration to Ripple's Distributed Financial Technology. This Volpe Ripper, uh, Ripple Processor Module, which now we know supports XRP. So I always pay attention as well to older press releases from Ripple. This is from 2016. And there are multiple more tie-ins with Goldman Sachs and Ripple as well, which you are about to see here. Goldman Sachs, Blockchain Billions, just real quickly. Goldman Sachs recently published a report, this is 2016, detailing their projections on the potential savings and increased revenue with the use of blockchain technology. Bottom line from this press release or from this report from Goldman Sachs, the fifth largest bank in the U.S. believes that blockchain tech will save banks and other businesses billions of dollars every year. Another release, and this is 2018 from Goldman Sachs directly mentions xrp and interestingly enough pay attention this is a goldman sachs research newsletter but look at uh for ex for the exclusive use of anton filatov at spurbank and we will go over spurbank here in a second currency slash transactional coins from a goldman sachs newsletter for example ripple xrp is designed for foreign exchange applications cannot be mined and is subject to centralized controls which you know, we all know that the XRPL is decentralized, but I'll let them speak whatever rhetoric they want to speak and is subject to centralized controls, which some institutional users find appealing. So they're giving a nod to XRP, at least, even though it's a little bit of a um, uh, ignorant or non informed nod, but it's still a nod. Now we saw Spurbank, right? Uh, for the exclusive use of Anton Filatov at Spurbank. Pay attention to details. Money Rebel implementing cross-border transfers with Ripple appears to support Bitstamp, which is X-Rapid, Vanguard, and Spurbank Russia. Now, this is this is probably going to be a little bit uh, blurry for you all. I apologize. But this is this Money Rebel platform I presented on this before. We can see account Spurbank, Crypto Wallet, Bitstamp Exchange, Vanguard account. And then we can see payment services either Ripple, Swift, um, etc. Go through it. All right. Goldman Sachs again. Systems and methods for updating a distributed ledger based on partial validations of transactions. Now, this is still a pending patent, okay? This was initially filed in 2015. Directly talks about Ripple, okay? For each, or for example, each of validation servers, and this 130 correlates to the uh, these little slides that they have up in here. Uh, I looked through those. It doesn't directly say Ripple or XRP, so I'm just going to read through the actual language. For, uh, for example, each of validation servers, uh, 130 and 132 may be associated with an asset, e.g., or for example, a fiat currency such as U.S. dollars or euros, or a cryptocurrency such as bitcoins or ripples. So they are talking about XRP. Obviously, we know 2015 that uh, XRP was still uh, called Ripple. So... And they, they talk about uh, Ripple again in this. The currencies may include fiat currencies such as US dollars or euros, but other, also other types of currencies such as cryptographic currencies, Bitcoin or Ripples. Uh, this is a data structure for storing ledger balances and account information on a distributed ledger. Talks about digital wallets in here. So where do you think all of this is going? Do you think that they aren't prepped for whenever they have regulatory clarity to use digital assets? Or maybe they're just making patents just for the hell of it. Who knows? All right. Now... Ex Goldman MD joins Oxford University Venture Fund. Now, this was the author of this patent. Uh, I believe it was Matt Matthew Timothy Arnold. Okay, this is just a sidebar here. This is venture arm investing uh, in companies spun out of uh, own departments. Research Rec recruits Cambridge University alum who worked in the U.S. Bank's principal strategic investment unit. 
Uh, and it, again, it was it's this Matt Arnold right here. And I did look up and uh, vet this a little bit. You know, this is the same guy. Uh, but interestingly enough, Oxford Foundry partners with Ripple's University Blockchain Research Initiative. Nothing huge there. Just trying to tie some dots together. All right. This is a little bit bigger, and I always pay attention to these institutional moves between the <clears throat> these uh, ex-employees. And Goldman Sachs is just one example of this. I mean, you could look at, I think, CGI and, you know, Finaster and all these other ones, and there's multiple moves made, made between Ripple uh, and these big players. Uh, Blockchain.com loses Goldman Sachs better into Ripple. Uh, this is Brianne Madigan. Uh, and if you're not aware, she used to be bigwig, uh, head of America's... Uh, I think for uh, institutional wealth at Goldman Sachs. And now she is head of uh, global institutional markets at Ripple. Uh, an another one here, and this was this year, Goldman Sachs FX executive. I'm going to butcher this. Aditya uh, Tarakia uh, leaves to Ripple. And he was the Goldman Sachs executive director uh, in charge of global foreign exchange and emerging markets franchise management. Uh, he joined Ripple and he looks like he's working under Brianne and he is the... A global institutional markets senior manager at Ripple now. So very interesting how all this ties in together. Earlier this year, we did see this. Goldman Sachs sells $6.5 million of shares in Ripple partner, partner MoneyGram. So just trying to tie all this together for you all. Today's news, MoneyGram partners with a bank's name that I'm going to butcher in Egypt uh, to expand access to its global platform to millions of customers across Egypt. We do know that MoneyGram is on-demand liquidity, uh, XRP enabled. Uh, and we've seen multiple news out of the Middle East uh, and, you know, Egypt over the past week or two. Uh, so that I always pay attention to what's going on over there right now, because Bahrain, Dubai, Egypt, uh, Saudi Arabia. I mean, there's just been news, tons of news recently. So this is interesting. I saw this today. This is the U.S. Department of Energy grants DMG an export license. Now, DMG blockchain solutions. Uh, granted a license by the U.S. Department of Energy. And this new export license is going to extend DMG's ability to purchase across United States, specifically Washington State. Uh, if you don't know, DMG, you know, they're very much so into Bitcoin mining as well. Uh, and this was uh, in January of this year. Canada's DMG blockchain installs 1,000 new Bitcoin mining rigs for U.S. client. So they're granted a license by the U.S. Department of Energy. So I wouldn't want to say that's very much so sustainable uh, from an uh, from a green uh, standpoint. But you know we'll see where that plays out. Kraken, as we all know, just became a bank basically, and they're expected to relaunch in Japan. That news came out today as well. We see more big news: Fidelity and Deutsche Bank. We know that the issues that they've had over the past couple of days. Well, I think it was Deutsche Bank, um, as far as. Uh, misuse of funds or, or not knowing where their illicit illicit fund transfers are going on for two decades uh, are now going to adopt blockchain reporting tool for funds so and this also came out today japanese messaging giant line rolls out a token reward program now i do believe this is the same thing as line pay uh maybe crypto eddie might uh talk on this but line pay and sbi japan we do know collaborate using ripple technology which is money tap money tap is built on RippleNet, uh, and I guess Line and Yahoo Japan uh, had a merger here. So I, if I'm incorrect that Line Pay is not Line, uh, please correct me on that. But we can see here today they're going to roll out a token reward pro program. And I think it's through a, uh, it's their own token called Link. And it's not Chainlink, I don't believe. It's, it's just their token called Link. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. More government, anti-money uh, uh, laundering. Opportunities exist to increase law enforcement use a uh, bank secrecy act and it's just interesting rhetoric because we we see the issues that have been going on over the past few days as far as these big banks getting into a lot of trouble and it talks about uh example regulatory agencies and market participants are exploring the use of distributed ledger technology including blockchain to improve supply chain visibility and integrity uh, again more rhetoric applying blockchain technology to uh, address the crisis of trust during this pandemic Facebook's Libra co-creator leaves the company. And then I wanted to end this with Goldman Sachs because many of you know that that's a gigantic financial institution, right? Uh, they are uh, one of the largest investment banking enterprises in the world. Never use Wikipedia for source site or for citing facts, but this is as far as like a, a high level overview of Goldman Sachs. I have no issue doing this. Um, largest, uh, one of the largest investment banking enterprises in the world, primary dealer in the United States, States treasury security market. 
more generally a prominent market maker. Uh, and they are a giant, everybody. I think most of us know that. Revenue uh, last year, 36.54, uh, actually $36.55 billion if I round up. Uh, total assets, almost a trillion. Uh, multiple su subsidiaries, 38,000, over 38,000 employees. Multiple several, uh, multiple former employees of Goldman Sachs moved on to work in the government, including Steve Mnuchin. So uh, just very, very interesting what's going on across the board here, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, the ESL news with Coil, I also think is huge. But the Volante partnership with basically Volante's Volpe underpinning Goldman Sachs transaction banking platform, I think is big. And I think it all leads toward di uh, towards digitization and eventually digital assets. Again. Try to stay level-headed here. You know, nobody makes great investment decisions whenever you're pissed off. I mean, it just doesn't happen. Uh, you know, if you're if you're mad, you know, I understand that I'm frustrated as well. I'm sick of this bear market, but I do look at this as an opportunity just to reiterate that again. Um, and I believe that most of these big institutions that are future-proofing and building, building to support digital assets, <laughs> they're very much so looking at it as an opportunity. And you better believe that a lot of them are buying over the um, uh, over the counter. Uh, they're buying up digital assets that they're building upon. I guarantee you. Uh, and there are multiple winners out there that are, there's going to be multiple winners. So um, I hope you guys like this video. I hope it was a little bit shorter, but it's probably not. And appreciate you guys all watching and supporting uh, all the uh, research. So have a great evening and take care. Later.